out to you and welcome to Adelante Chicago. I'm Lourdes Duarte. Bienvenidos. Thank you so much for joining us today. Well, we have seen the buses arriving to Chicago filled with migrants hoping for a better life, usually leaving their country to escape abuse or deplorable conditions. Research suggests that asylum seekers are five times more likely to have mental health needs than the general population. Data also shows that they're less likely to receive the actual help that they need. The Chicago City Council Latino Caucus is hoping to change all of that. And here to talk a little bit more about it, Alderman Gilbert Villegas. So welcome. Thank, thank you for you. coming in. Thank you, Lourdes. Thank, Always, you for, yeah, yeah. thank you for bringing this topic Always up. Always nice to talk to you. Um, I know that the uh, coalition, the Illinois Legislative Latino Caucus Foundation, sent out a release not long ago. It had to be maybe a few weeks ago, calling and really pleading for mental health help for some of these migrants. Okay. How severe is the problem? It's very severe. Um, when, when, when this first came about, uh, we actually visited the site and we spoke to families that were that made the journey and I remember uh, it's, it's stuck in my, my, my head this this young this young mom mm -hmm. who had 11 month old and a four year old and she talked about how traveling through a jungle in Panama and how she was victimized um, by folks that were just robbing them uh, in some cases abusing women and I remember that they stole everything from this mom even the pampers and so when they arrived to Mexico, they had absolutely nothing. And so you can imagine that type of trauma that exists and how they're being, how they're being, uh, 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 how they're being um, treated from Texas. Uh, it's just not good. And so they're making a trip up to Chicago and mm -hmm. what we're doing here is a welcoming city and more importantly, a welcoming state. It's making sure that we're, we're working together with the city, the county, and the state to put forward resources. Yeah. Uh, and, and, to that, and to that point, we put together what's called a MARC, a multi, multiple agency resource center, uh, where the city, the county, and, sa and the state are providing services along with our not-for-profit uh, partners. And I, got, and I gotta give a shout out to our, our not-for-profit uh, partners. They've, they've stepped up um, and they're really making uh, them, these migrants feel welcome. Okay, and I know you know we talk about their journey here, but it's really layers of trauma yeah. because then they're coming into a new country. Yeah. They don't know what's going to happen. They don't even know where they're going to sleep that night. Yeah. So add all of that together, and it's a recipe for you know disaster in some cases. We've got several cases where individuals have actually committed suicide. Yeah, yeah, and and we were made aware of that, and that's really what sparked uh, the caucus taking action. Say we need to get the we need to get the feds involved as well. Um, what we're seeing is that um, uh, a, a, a tragedy that's being manifest mm -hmm. by the governor of Texas, Texas Abbott, uh, in transporting migrants to Washington, D.C., yeah. New York, Chicago, mm -hmm. really trying to score political points by saying, you guys are sanctuary cities where you deal with this. And the reality is, is that you have a lot of people uh, that are seeking asylum from, from countries um, that are just have abused their citizens and so they're, they're coming here for for a, a better life and I think it's incumbent upon us as Americans uh, that we we take into consideration the, the, the journeys and the travels and struggles they have and make them feel welcome and that's yeah. why uh, we've asked the federal government to help uh, with funding but also through legislative changes I mean you, right now migrants that are coming here uh, can't even get work and I've talked to some of the migrants at some of the, these, uh, these shelters and these sites, and they've basically told me, when do you think I can get a job? When do you think I can start working? Because they're, they, they really want to contribute to society, uh, but unfortunately the rules that are in place right now at the federal level prohibit that. And so we've, we're working with the uh, Department of HH, HHS as well as our Illinois delegation to see if there's an opportunity to change the rules to allow for some of these migrants instead of waiting the six month period, maybe wait a 30, 60 day period in order to get folks working. And again. I, I always try to walk people through it, why it's important. Yeah. So for example, someone who is living at a shelter, you can't clear those shelters and oh. get people out of there until they can find permanent housing and they can't find permanent housing without a job because who's going to rent to somebody who has no credit history, doesn't have a paycheck or a regular paycheck, right? So that becomes a real issue. Yeah, absolutely. So we're talking almost 4,000 asylum seekers that, we're, that, that are in our possession right now that we're trying to help. Uh, and what's, what's scary is that um, we're, we're just going to get more. We're going to get more right. because of the fact that um, the governor of Texas is again playing politics with people's lives. Uh, th then we hear that the, the governor of Colorado 
is also thinking about sending folks to, to these sanctuary cities. And he's a Democrat. Mm -hmm. And it's frustrating because I'm like, listen, these are human beings. These are, these are parents with kids. These are young men and women that, again, are seeking a better life and are, and are leaving their homeland in order to do that. And I think it's incumbent upon us as Americans that we uh, remember how, how this country was founded and, and, and act accordingly. So let me ask you this, you know, there's a difference between wanting help and actually getting it. Yeah. Where are we in the process to getting a step closer to getting those resources, getting mental health help for yeah. some of these folks? So, so um, it, it, we're, we're doing that now. We need to do more uh, because obviously these have costs associated mm -hmm. with it. And so we're, we're uh, again talking to our Illinois delegation, talking to the White House to make sure that there's some services and some funding that can be provided as well. Uh, in next week, I'll have the acting director of H -H HHS, uh, Joseph Palm. He'll be in Chicago. He's, he works for the secretary of HHS, uh, Javier Bacera. Uh, who is a former congressman and understands uh, the needs, uh, given that he was from California and ha had these same struggles. Uh, so he'll be, he'll be in town. We're going to take him to some sites to take a look so that way he firsthand he can see this and report back to the secretary on the urgency that's needed here in order to bring resources uh, uh, and, and more importantly funding in order to provide the yeah. services. I know the mayor actually put in a call for I think it was 50 plus million dollars in funding. Would that be part of sort no, of what you're working on or this is something this, in addition to that? This is in addition to the, mm -hmm. the 53 million dollars that the uh, mayor has, has requesting from uh, Springfield uh, are state dollars and so we're looking to get some federal dollars uh, and we're, we're looking to get them urgently because of the fact that we know that there's a little bit of a law right now and the bus mm -hmm. is coming but it's going to pick up again sure and so we've got to make sure that we're prepared yeah I think people are preparing for that um, you brought up the mayor and I think it's important to mention that there's a little bit of controversy right now yeah. over this whole idea of opening up another shelter a bigger shelter at Wadsworth on the south side that has not been received or at least the idea has not been received well what do you think needs to happen there or how do you sort of massage this what's been going on to yeah. make it work well I, I can tell you this is frustrating because of the fact that you know, what's important is communication. And unfortunately, uh, this administration did not communicate uh, to the extent that the older woman that represents that ward felt comfortable with and didn't engage the community enough. Mm -hmm. And so what you see is uh, the community saying, wait a minute, what's going on here? We, we, you know, we live here. Uh, we want to make sure that we have, we have facts. Uh, and, 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 and that's important. They, they deserve that as residents of that ward. Uh, but this is something that you've seen this administration unfortunately do over and over. It's just the lack of communication with the alderman. The alder person that's, represent, that's elected represents that area. We're elected just like the mayor is. And so we're the legislative branch. And so we got to make sure that uh, we're, we're lockstep in trying, to, in trying to provide as much information as possible. Uh, but what I don't want to see occur is that this turned into some type of racial thing where we have mm -hmm. Wadsworth, which is located in, in a predominantly African-American community, and the migrants primarily being uh, Latino that are coming there. Because we've heard some statements about, you know, send them to Little Village, and I think that that's not, the, that's not what we're, we, we shouldn't be doing that. This is about making sure that we're helping our fellow uh, uh, fellow human. Um, but if there, if there are issues or resources that that community needs in, in uh, in, uh, at the Wadsworth area, then let's have that discussion as well. It's not an either or. We should be trying to help as many people as we can. Yeah. So you think there is a way for the two yeah. teams, the two sides yeah. to really work I, together? I, I, think it's, I think it's mm -hmm. more about communication. Uh, you, there was a press conference um, last week that spoke to um, about, about this, but it, I, I, you have to give it, you can't give it as much merit because the person who called the press conference is running for alder person against the current incumbent. Okay. And so we don't want, we don't want uh, anybody being utilized as political pawns, sure. so we got to be careful about that. Always political, it seems yeah. like. Okay, Gilbert Villegas, uh, alderman for the city of Chicago. We Thank appreciate you. your time. Thank you, I appreciate it. All right.